Someone asked in the comments earlier if I was unwell because I bought a PS5. And and when I say I'm unwell, I'm I'm not sick. I never get a cold. I, I occasionally get muscle sprains, but I wouldn't say I'm unwell from that. But I it means my head's not right. Something's happened. I've been thrown off balance and I, I can't focus. I'm gonna try and do practice rewards while I while I explain myself. But someone said are you unwell because you bought a PS5? And I assume they meant because I've been up all night playing it that I'm tired and then I've got sick from being tired. But but what happened is I, I, I when I ordered the PS5, it tells you it's like five days delivery and, and I don't know that I'm going to be at my flat next week. So I asked my mother, can I send it to your house because she's there all the time and it's simpler in the next five days. And she's yes and... and and then I order it, but I order it knowing that that well, sorry, I order it knowing that it will come either the next day or the day after is the most probable days, and that this was Thursday that it arrived, and I get the text saying it's arrived, it's arriving at whatever time at this address, and my mother's not in that day. It's the only day she's not there, and I don't want it to be bounced around back and forth to depots because these boxes get kicked around a lot when they're delivered by like online, well, courier retail, courier delivery people, and I, I don't like these sort of devices being bashed around and the electronics getting hindered that they then don't last as long as they should. And so I think I'll just drive down and collect it. It was a split second decision that someone has started cutting trees down outside the back of my house. I'm thinking, well, it's a good way to avoid the noise. I'll drive down and get it. I've got a key for her house. I'll let myself in and I'll accept the delivery and then I'll come back. And so I, I drive out that what we've got to do, B121 jumps for. So I just get in my car. I'm in tier three. I don't care about this key. I didn't even get I, because of my all my my lack of ability to tell what's going on. I missed all the practice rewards. So I didn't get the five blueprints. So I should have eighteen, and I've only got thirteen out of twenty six. It annoys me that this game doesn't let you ever have a day off. Like you can't catch up if you take a day off. You just get punished for that for the rest of your life. That that's not a fun thing. That's not a great quality of this game. And I've forgotten what I'm saying. So I get in my car to go get this thing. Amazed that I'm just getting in my car because I haven't left the street for weeks. I don't know. I I haven't left anywhere for ages. And I drive out, and somehow I drove past the the pile of rubbish without even telling whether there was a pile of rubbish at the end of my road. I'm going really slow. So yeah, I managed to drive past the end of the road, but then the moment I'm like five feet down the road, I'm starting to think, is the door locked? Have I left the heating on? Is the oven on? Are the lights on? Is the lamp on? Is the lamp too close to the curtain? Are my windows open? Could the curtains be blown into a lamp and cause a fire? Is anything else on that could cause a fire? Is my laptop on? Is the PlayStation on? And then my head's just looping, and I'm like, this is why I don't need the house, isn't it? Sorry. I get I get to her house. I've then got sorry, I don't get to her house. I then realise I've got a doctor's appointment. I can't say what my doctor's appointment is about. It's about something important that I have to sort out for next week. I don't know what time the doctor's appointment is because I can't remember anything. I can never remember anything. When everything happens, my brain goes blank. I can't remember anything. I can't remember where I'm going ever, can I? Anyway, I get get to I it's about eleven thirty. I'm about to get on the motorway on the M4 to drive back to Ascot, where I grew up, to my mother's house, and. If I get on the M4, I can't take a phone call. So I, if I'm if I'm not on a motorway, I can pull over and take a phone call, and my doctor's going to call me. So I want to I want to pull over when he calls me because I've got to start this trip because I haven't got time to get. I can't wait for the doctor at home and then drive to my mother's. I had to start driving there, take the call halfway there. So I park up at eleven thirty 
just before I have to get on the M4, well, I park up about 11.20, just before the entrance to the M4, so I can sit there and take the phone call. And I'm sitting there, and it gets to about 11.35, and then I'm wondering, I don't actually know what time the appointment is. It's just normally at 11.30, and my, I can't remember and every time you have an appointment what the next one's at. And because so many have been at 11.30, my brain was just telling me it's probable it's at 11.30. But it wasn't at 11.30. By about 11.45, I started installing the app to tell me when the appointment was, and I find out the appointment's at 12.20. And now I've, I've literally got to get on the motorway straight away so that on the other side I'll be able to take the call, because otherwise I'm still going to be stuck on the motorway because I've wasted time parking by the side of the road. And then I'm having these thoughts of the Doctor Who about the motorway. There's a Doctor Who episode where people get lost to the motorway. The moment you go on the motorway, you can never get off again and you can't and you lose communication with the outside world. That was exactly what was about to happen to me. Anyway, I get get back to Ascot, get to my mother's house, have the call with my doctor. That goes fine. I wait an hour or two for the parcel because it's oh that's a really I shouldn't have drifted like that that. It's a really bad, um, I had to wait ages for the parcel. I then get the parcel, the box is all damaged, but it, it doesn't matter, it's just sort of drag damage. It's just the exterior packing box and it's just dragging damage rather than um, any damage to the actual box. Put the box in my car, drive back home, open my door, pass out, wake up, think it's Friday morning, start having a shower for Friday morning, realise it's 8.30pm on Thursday night. I have no idea what's going on. Um, and then that sort of put me out of sync. <laughs> um, and then I can't say what happened today. I shouted at someone and I feel really bad about it. Eight o'clock in the morning today, someone starts bugging me when I'm on the phone outside. I say, go away. They carry on bugging me. I say, please go away. They carry on bugging me. I then screamed at them and swore. And I'm, I'm, I can't stop having that conversation with myself about what happened. I've done it in one of my own, it's, I've, I've shouted at this person in the safest space I have on the universe in the middle of my park. So I'm now scared to sit in the park so the next time we interact, I'm gonna, there's gonna be a conversation that I don't wanna have to have. And there's a, I'm doing something on Monday that I'm getting anxious about and there's this crescendo inside me of everything's building up and I'm unable to, to, to deal with stuff until I've managed to, to complete Monday. If I get there. That was bad spin. Lost it after that spin. I got interrogated by the police in the park yesterday as well. And the irony is I'm sort of one of the people that's led to the police. Well, I'm one of the people in the community that's been 
raising the question that we need someone to act on the amount of crack dealing going on in our park. And so the the police have then their only idea is to walk th walk like 15 of them through like the SS and interrogate every single man that sat in the park, which at the time happened to only be me. They're like, what were you doing sat around the other side of the pond? And it's like, have you ever been to this park? It's like community, they always talk about community policing and they send 15 police into a park, none of whom have ever been in that park. So they don't even know what's normal within the park. They, they wander into the entrance of the park going, oh, where do we go? And they're like, oh, just split up, guys, just split up. And they're like, look, they're just staring at me, staring at me, saying, does that guy look nervous? Does he look nervous? Let's stare at him and see how nervous he gets. And if he gets nervous, then there must be something suspicious about him. Guess what? Anxious people look nervous. So every time you're coming through, like the SS, all you do is pick on people that are sensitive and slightly nervous, which is brilliant, isn't it?